Hey everyone, this is John with Redenso. And I'm Mindy, hi. And today we're going to do an interesting video and we're going to show why two radar detectors should not be run side by side. I know you it's, see it a fair bit though. Yeah, well it's super convenient. I totally understand why it would be tempting to do that. It kind of seems like half of the amount of work when you're doing testing. Um, but I know that like Vortex and a lot of other testers have said, please don't do that for a while. And they're not just making that up. And today we're going to actually show you specifically why you shouldn't do that. There's two big problems, which we'll get into. Yeah. And to kick things off, uh, we've had a lot of questions that have come up over some of the videos in the last few weeks um, regarding Thea. <clears throat> and so just a quick uh, overview of Thea, where we're at. Um, some of the biggest questions are uh, price. How much is it going to be? Um, it, everyone wants to know. It's going to be the most expensive windshield mount radar detector. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be less than $1,000, but more than the Escort Mac, or Redline, Redline 360, 360 whatever. C, yeah. yes. So that should give you a pretty good idea where it is. Between $750 and $1,000. Yep. Uh, people want to know when it's going to come out. 2020. 2020. We've been saying that all along. Yep. Uh, and I'm glad we did. We didn't anticipate the world practically ending yep. and uh, definitely set us back a little bit. But we're still on track for 2020 and development's going very well. Yep. Um, and you know we've seen other you know brands get bludgeoned with missing deadlines. So we yeah, we, we don't we don't want to rush it. Um, we've seen what happens when that happens. It's not something we're interested in. So mm -hmm. we're going to do our best to get it as soon as possible, but also make sure that we get the basics right and that it's a good detector right out of the gate. Uh, people have been asking if it's going to have arrows. Yes, it has arrows. Uh, yes, it has arrows, dual horns. Um, Please don't ask Randy that. Please. He just will go off yeah, the deep just end. Just don't ask him. Uh, what about range? It's going to have the longest range on the market. Mm, really? So I'll yep. believe it when I see it. I, I don't blame you. I love it. I'm so sassy. And yes, we do use AI. It's real AI. It's inferencing on the device. It's not fake AI. Yes. Um, mm. It won't take over the world and kill you, though. It's not that good. Not the, not the bad kind of yeah. AI. Yeah. Um, and does it have laser detection? Yes, it has laser detection. Cool. Um, ticket notifier. But still, we're putting it in there. Yeah, because so. we know people like it. Yeah. So that being said, we're going to get on to the video for today. If you have not hit subscribe yet and enabled notifications for our channel, uh, and you like what we're doing, hit the little button, um, subscribe to us. Yeah. So let's take a look at the setup that we have here. If you've been watching our videos for a long time, you may have uh, seen this in previous videos, kind of this setup on the screen, and it's a program called Phosphor. For all intents and purposes, what Phosphor does is give you a view into what radar detectors see. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of think of this whole setup here as just a radar detector that you can see on the screen. Um, for our intents and purposes, we're looking at X-band here today. Now, I want you guys to know that the same exact principles to what we're seeing would apply in K-band or KA-band. We're simply looking at X-band because it's where the specters tend to look at. Mm -hmm. um, I already have it set up, and it's just convenient for us. So don't think that this doesn't apply to KA or K-band. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have an Escort Max 360, which is not a stealth detector, which is one of the reasons I picked it. And we have our radar detector sitting next to the, the Escort. And this is what you see. Mindy, can you describe what is going on here? It looks crazy. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like we have a constant on signal here in the middle, yep. uh, or continual uh, signal of some sort. And then <clears throat> over here at uh, 11034, I see a pulsed uh, signal here. Also over here, the other side. A ton of small signals. Yeah, like little blips, but if this is time and this is frequency, right? So this same frequency over uh, an yeah. extended period of time it c keeps coming back to that exact same signal and you can see the big spikes up here. So I think you described that really well. I mean, what you're seeing here is kind of like equivalent to a million different pop radars, like super short, couple of microsecond bursts, or I'm sorry, millisecond bursts, but they're spread out all over the frequency spectrum that we care about except that they're a little bit more concentrated on a certain frequency, as Mindy pointed out, and that's right here. Now, one thing that's important to understand is that radar detectors, uh, traditional radar detectors, legacy detectors, they look at energy over time to determine if there's a real alert. And as Mindy pointed out, we have a CW signal in the middle here that is essentially a police gun. And if this is time, you can see that that signal is present. All, it's continuously like someone's holding it down. So that's super easy for a radar detector to pick up. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated with pulsed signals. And that's why detectors sometimes have problems with BSM or detecting MRCD. If you look up here, which this, this here, everything above this line is an averaged view. Uh, this is looking at it over time. You can see that this stays continuous 
But right here, you kind of see a peak that's starting to fade into existence. Um, it's, it's still faint, but if this is like the perfectly black background where there's no noise, right here, I'm sorry, there's no signal, you can actually see a spike forming. And that mm -hmm. spike looks exactly the same as a CW signal because when escorts tuning, they're coming back to that one particular frequency so fast that it at the power starts to build up over time. They're just hitting it over and over and over and over and over. So if you have two radar detectors next to each other on the windshield uh, and you're running them side by side, both powered on to you yep. know, a, an easy way to test, and you're getting this leakage from one detector to the other, it doesn't understand that that's not a police officer. It's exactly. seeing this here which is triggering it to, to say, okay, I need to alert. Exactly. So this problem is one uh, which is easily seen by you guys. Like if you're driving down the road and you get a, co a 34 point whatever falls from a Cobra, that's because when Cobra is tuning their local oscillator, there is, this is what's happening at that particular frequency. Mm -hmm. And that's why different brands cause different false alerts at different frequencies, because everybody has their own tuning strategy, mm -hmm. right? Redenso is going to tune our local oscillator in, in a different pattern than Escort would, in a different pattern than, I don't know, K40 would or whatever. So it just depends where these spikes are located. That's where you're going to get the false alert. So I think that, j just before we move on to the next one, I just want to point out, like, that is all coming from the escort. If I move this away or block it, all that leakage goes away. Um, it's pretty mm -hmm. crazy, to be honest with you. So that's what a non-stealth detector looks like to another radar detector, and that's why you're sometimes going to get um, false alerts from them. Oh. So, um, How about? Um, problem number two we yeah. should talk about. So this problem, while annoying, is one that you know is happening because your radar detector is getting a false alert. But sometimes you also are going to see weird, inconsistent test results. Uh, maybe your range is really good sometimes, and it's bad another time, or it doesn't alert. Or a detector that, uh, two detectors that should be pretty on par with each other. One yep. is perhaps performing consistently better than the other. Yeah. So what we're going to look at next is the effect, um, the effect of of blasting a wideband signal, <laughs> like blasting all this energy, raising the noise floor and how that could interfere with detectors depending on how they're programmed. Now, I do want to say that um, I'm going to generalize here. So th each detector is going to respond to this a little bit differently. It's super complicated. It has to go into how you're doing your DSP. Are you using automatic gain control? Just tons of stuff that would be way out of scope of this video. It will affect all detectors. It will also affect all of them slightly differently. So let's take a look. Yeah. I'm going to retune our radar detector here. I think the thing too is like with ambient noise, or is what I would call it, right? Or while we're showing this at um, ten four eight. Yep. Like so this is real world. I mean, so this you, this is going to be hard to see, and this is kind of the point. If you look here, there is a very, very faint signal that's being leaked out of the LO from the MAX 360. Can you hit pause on it real quick? I'll, I'll pause it in one okay. second. But this massive spike that you're seeing here that's all over here, that's actually a harmonic of Wi-Fi. So we have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi in here, and we're at about 10 gigahertz. So uh, just like you can see KA or K-band harmonics, you can see the same thing or imaging of, of Wi-Fi. So I'm going to try to pause this. It might be a little tricky. And I'm going to pause it while the Wi-Fi spike is happening. Actually, that's not that's bad. That's pretty good. So let's look up here, because this is the, the averaged version. This is, this is most realistic to what a radar detector would see. Um, if you look over here, you can see that there's a very, very, very low noise floor. And that's great for detecting signals, because it's, they stick out like a sore thumb. But <coughs> if you look over here, um, and this is where that, the frequency range where this Wi-Fi spike starts. Yeah. You'll see that because this is averaging, there is a high noise floor here. The, the background is uh, less clean, I guess you could say, in, in layman's terms. And that has a couple of problems for a radar detector. If your signal that you're trying to pick up is super strong, like this CW police gun in the middle, not a big deal. You can still 
see pretty clearly, Mindy, yeah. how this is a nice spike. Yeah, it doesn't stick out quite as well as it would if all this like kind of <laughs> light blue noise wasn't here, but you can still clearly see it. But when comparing it to this exactly. little itty bitty bit here, I, that's hard for me to see. Exactly. So if you are averaging, like all current radar detectors do, you're trying to find, it's barely visible here. You can yeah. kind of see the spike, um, but it's, it kind of gets lost against the noise. Yeah. Now that's, when, that's nuts. I, yeah. My mind is blown. So this is the kind of thing that, that can happen if, if you have something that's just blasting tons of inter what's interference, <coughs> essentially. Um, you're going to raise the entire noise floor of your detector. Your carrier to noise ratio is going to be less. And these ambient, I'm calling them ambient, um, signals, you're not, I would have never thought when we started shooting this video, like, hey, Wi-Fi would interfere or, or show on this. Like, I, I, I guess yeah. I'm just... So in, in, our, in our actual radar detectors, Wi-Fi specifically won't interfere because we have filters that are built in to filter it out. But this concept, the same concept applies exactly. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, we filter out Wi-Fi, but if I take a radar generator and stick it, stick it next to it, then yeah. you're going to see the, the radar noise. So the exact same concept applies. Yeah. Um, again, every detector will process this information a little bit differently. Like the Valentine one's going to do it totally different than how the Escort does. And Thea will do it totally different than both of those. So for the end user, they're going to have reduced range because the radar they detector. They could. They absolutely could. Is um, looking for that signal through the muddy waters. You especially? could. You could also have less reactivity because if it thinks it sees something, it might trigger an algorithm that wants to wait and average for a longer period of time. Yeah. Um, there's and that's what I was saying where it comes down to the strategies. Like when people are designing these radar detectors, this is something that their engineering team sits down and says, "How do we want this thing to behave when there's a weak signal uh, in the presence of interference?" and we all try to solve that in different ways. But it's, if you're trying to test apples to apples, you want to do everything that you can to keep them on the same playing field, remove all that kind of jazz, and just give them a clean signal like that background, yeah. um, as opposed to blasting them with extraneous radar noise. And then just for giggles, is it, and this may not be a topic for today, but is it possible like a quick Eli 5 of what Theo would be doing? Uh, one thing I will say is that, and, and I think this is fairly uncontroversial, and I'll speak in general AI terms and machine learning terms as opposed to like just Redenso. Sure. But one thing that machine learning is very, very good at doing is seeing, um, I guess, seeing patterns in noise, right? So it's tough for, it's tough for an algorithm to always pick that out, but theoretically machine learning should be a much better and more efficient way to do that. Um, that's one of the reasons that I'm kind of excited about putting it in Theo. We should be able to have much better distinction of those kind of threshold signals and kind of ignore, ignore a lot of the environment when, when we're trying to do signal discrimination. That's cool. Um, that's going to, I think, especially apply when we're trying to detect MRCD and MRCT. Yeah. Just being able to look at it and know is going to really be helpful. I mean, because you could put um, an MRCD shot next to this, right? If you wanted to. Yeah. And well, sure and, they would and that's, that's how the real world is. The real world has 50 signals on the screen at once, and yeah. you've got to be able to operate in, in those conditions. And I think I forget about like how many uh, ambient, you know, signals there are out there, right? Yep. Not just BSMs and stationary, but like things like Wi-Fi. Yeah, I wouldn't for think sure. of. Cool. So. Well, hope you guys found this uh, informational, and we were able to give some method behind the madness of why you don't want to run two radar detectors at the same time. Why it's a bad idea. Yep. Don't do it. Just yeah. say no. Poor life decision. Um, all right, we'll talk to you guys uh, next time, and uh, be safe. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye.